If Hamas wins, we all lose. Let me say it very clearly at once. Hamas is the worst thing that has ever happened to Palestine. If Hamas wins, we all lose. First and foremost, the Palestinians themselves. Hamas is the biggest oppressor and tormentor of the Palestinians. Hamas exploits them enslaves them and uses them as human shields. Hamas steals the money that the global community has donated to help the Palestinians and uses it to buy or build weapons and execute any dissidents. If Hamas wins, the Palestinians will only see their daily miseries multiplied a hundredfold in the future because Hamas is a cult of war and has no intention of ever building peace or progress for Palestine or anyone else but only to make war and destroy Israel at all costs. Hamas can't get enough of violence. That's why they invite and provoke violence. If there's no violence, Hamas can't survive because it only gets stronger in turmoil, like guerrilla movements, or oh, how well we know this in Latin America. Hamas only flourishes and thrives in war. Without war, it no longer has a reason to exist. Its only mission and motivation are to destroy the state of Israel at any cost, even if it means exterminating, obliterating the entire population of Gaza to achieve it. How sad and alarming it is to see Crowds of ignorant screamers in the streets and universities of so many cities of the free world, all of them unaware that they are signing their personal death sentence by supporting a group with an ideology like that of Hamas. I call them ignorant because they think they are helping the Palestinian people, which is a beautiful and urgent idea. Please, let's all truly support the Palestinians. But in their ignorance... They are supporting Hamas, the greatest pest and bane of the Palestinian people. Supporting Hamas is as toxic and foolish as supporting Kim Jong-un, the current dictator of North Korea, under the illusion that this is helping the North Korean people. If they really wanted to support the Palestinian people, all those screaming boys and girls would demonstrate in favor of freedom of expression and the press in Gaza, the Palestinians' freedom of education their freedom not to be used as human shields, to be equal before the law, and especially and urgently their freedom to rid themselves of the corrupt and repressive government of Hamas. Did you know, by the way, that some of the leaders of Hamas watched all the devastation they started very safely with their families from fabulous five-star hotels in Qatar? The screaming mobs on these marches don't care about the fate of any other oppressed ethnicities and groups that deserve support. They believe themselves to be apostles of freedom, but they only protest for the Palestinians because they hate Israel. Never mind what Turkey, for example, does to the Kurds, China to the Tibetans and Uyghurs, Russia to the Tatars and Chechens, Myanmar to the Karens. Whatever Iran does against Kurds, Azeris, Christians, and Baha'is, Iraq against Kurds, Christians, and Yazidis, that is not important, not worthy of their attention. What motivates this bust-in racists from HiraBigot.com is hatred of Jews, not love for Palestinians or other oppressed groups. These bust-in racists do not consider the rapes, beheadings, tortures, mass murders, and kidnapping of Jews and other innocent people. The barbarity of Hamas never registers in their bewildered racist minds. Nor does the cruelty of Turkey, Russia, China, Myanmar, Iran, Iraq, Pakistan. Only their hatred of Israel and the Jewish people moves them to go out and shout in the streets. How very shameful. Strange, ridiculous, and clearly improvised groups that claim to speak on behalf of homosexuals, Jews, feminists, and progressives worldwide tacitly support the rapes, beheadings, live burnings, mass murders, and kidnapping of Jews by Hamas. 
the most ludicrous thing is that none of these shouting groups, none of these mobs, would survive a single day in Gaza. All these deluded, busting people have not realized that Hamas does not tolerate homosexuals, Jews, feminists, or progressives of any ilk. They don't get it. Hamas kills people from all backgrounds, gays, pro-Palestinian Jews, feminists, progressives, and tourists from all and every nation. But they're too busy waving their handed-out flags and signs. By the way, ask yourself, who sponsors this? Who is paying for all these marches around the globe? These crowds turn up with professionally printed signs and banners, flags and poles, and professional agitators as organizers. None of these are free. Who is sponsoring all this? Who foots the bill? No one, certainly, who wants to see peace and concord in our world or our communities. That's why I call and will call these busting youths ignorant. And I call and will call them racists because it's clear that the only thing that motivates them is their hatred of Jews and the state of Israel, which in no way benefits the Palestinian people, but only Hamas. Among the most scandalous, laughable, and suicidal supporters of Hamas is a group called Gays for Gaza, waving transgender rainbow flags to show the world that homosexuals are always at the forefront of the struggle for the best causes. These gays don't have the brains to realize that in Gaza their persons, their posters, and little prefabricated flags are illegal. Hamas would kill anyone waving those posters and flags in Gaza because radical Islamists detest homosexuality, not to mention transgenderism, and will take the most drastic measures to punish it and eradicate it from the face of the earth. Precisely as happened in the case of Mahmoud Ishtiwi, a Hamas commander who was caught being very amorous with another man and was promptly tortured and executed despite his long-standing service for Hamas. Hamas detests human rights. Hamas is the kind of organization that throws homosexuals and trans people from the rooftop of the tallest building, or flattens them against the ground by running a steamroller over them. These gays for Gaza haven't yet realized that all homosexuals in Gaza must flee and seek asylum in Israel. Oh, oh, oh paradox. And that the city of Tel Aviv is one of the most pro-gay cities in the world. But gays for Gaza are more interested in expressing their hatred of Jews than their solidarity with Palestinian homosexuals. How ignorant and hypocritical, don't you think? And what about the screaming feminists, left-wing progressives, and unions that support the brutality of Hamas every time they dispute the existence of Israel? Somebody should remind these sleeping beauties that Hamas is one of the most anti-feminist groups on the planet. Hamas is the kind of organization that rewards its soldiers with nine-year-old brides. And rebellious young girls who refuse to cover their heads and obey without complaint are buried up to their necks, and once buried up to their necks, are stoned for inciting pious Muslims to sin. Please don't take my word for any of this. There are pictures of all of this on the Internet. Because it upholds and teaches the purest and most correct interpretation of Islam, Hamas subjects all women to any sexual or physical whim of their husbands and fathers, encouraging marriage to eight- and nine-year-old girls, wife-beating and honor killings of women who supposedly dishonor their families. Because Hamas is a very Islamic organization, and all these practices are in perfect keeping with Islamic theology. It's all in the Quran. Listen to my episodes, Islam Hates Women, and Is Paradise a Luxury Brothel? I will leave your links in the notes. Hamas is the worst thing that has ever happened to Palestine. Hamas imprisons its critics and does not allow independent schools or trade unions. Hamas exploits children as workers, soldiers, and human bombs. But all this does not seem to cross the minds of the marchers. And as for the Jews, it tortures rapes, beheads, and blows them up because it detests 
every Jew and Jewess and wants to wipe them all out, which is sadly nothing new, nor is it limited to Hamas. Islam has always hated all Jews. Look for pictures on the internet of Mufti Amin al-Husseini, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, the highest Islamic authority in the world during World War II, conversing and reviewing troops with his ally and friend Adolf Hitler and celebrating the genocide of their perceived common enemy, the Jews. Hitler, by the way, declared Islam a manly religion, a religion for machos. I leave you a link to this, too, in the notes. Hamas can torture and murder as many Jews as it wants, rape and behead as many Jewish girls and women as it wants. But don't you dare criticize Hamas, as I am openly doing here, because this is bigotry and Islamophobia. No, no, no. Legitimizing Hamas and its atrocities is leftist racism on an alarming level. And herein is my second accusation. I already had the guts to accuse the shouters at these marches of being ignorant. Now I accuse them of racism, too, because their shouting has a demonic resonance of anti-Semitism, of racial hatred of Jews. And before anyone jumps in and claims that what drives them is not anti-Semitism, hatred of Jews, but anti-Zionism, hatred of the state of Israel, What we hate is the state of Israel, you see? Ours is a political stance, not a racist one. Let me ask, when you shout, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, aren't you perhaps being racist? Tell me, what is going to happen to all the Jews in Israel? Will they be treated to an all-expenses-paid holiday to some tropical beach while their country is dismantled? What is going to happen to them? You cannot attack the state of Israel without attacking the Jews and wanting to see them disappear, like Hitler. But then, the left has always been racist. The left has forever demonized Jews with its grotesque depictions of Jews as greedy, soulless merchants. Karl Marx, that grand master of hatred, published a repellent and racist pamphlet against the Jews in 1844. Take note. 1844, more than a hundred years before the Jewish state existed. Look it up if you want to read the clumsy rumblings of a mediocre mind with a dark talent for poisoning everything it touches to this day. This Marxian pamphlet is titled The Jewish Question, and it is as dishonorable and shameful as the protocols of the elders of Zion and Adolf Hitler's My Struggle those classics of fascism which Marx's The Jewish Question preceded and inspired. Marx spells out the racial prejudice of the left from the very roots of Marxist ideology and its spawn, critical theory, and the contemporary left. What we see on the streets of the world is not an anti-Zionist movement against the state of Israel. No, this is an anti-Semitic movement against the Jewish race as disturbing as street scenes in Germany in the 1930s. This is white-hot racism, rampant hatred on the streets of many cities, and like all racist acts, it stinks and is abominable. Don't kid yourself. By supporting Hamas and joining in with those screaming mobs, you have become a public racist. Anyone with a clue of what is happening in the Middle East knows that Israel is the last bastion of order, progress, and democracy in the whole of the Middle East. That sounds amazing. But apart from Israel, can you name a single nation in the Middle East where order, progress, and democracy thrive? No, you can't. If Israel falls, the whole world loses, including first and foremost all the millions of Arabs and Muslims who love peace, freedom, and progress. If Israel falls, we all lose, today and in the future, because there will never be peace and freedom anywhere in the Middle East if Hamas wins this war. 
Oh, but Israel has been dropping bombs on the Palestinians and thousands and thousands of innocent people have been killed. Yes, I will painfully grant you that. And it is dreadfully sad. But don't get distracted. That was always the plan of Hamas, which did not mind selling out its Palestinian people in such a way to provoke worldwide hatred against Israel. Israel is forced to respond immediately to the bombing of its territory and the kidnapping of more than 200 of its citizens. But Israel cannot but lose by bombing Gaza, where innocent people will always die, not because it suits Israel, but because the cowards of Hamas hide behind innocent civilians to avoid being found and punished by Israel. Hamas is the worst thing that has ever happened to Palestine. Recall that this conflict began with Hamas's attack on Israel on 7 October 2023, during the holiest day of the Jewish religion. This attack was a coordinated assault on all fronts launched from the Gaza Strip. The operation involved ground, sea and air elements, with a barrage of rockets and armed soldiers breaking through security barriers on a Jewish holy day. This initial assault was so unexpected and devastating that more than 1,200 Israelis and foreigners, mostly civilians, were killed and 240 innocent people were taken hostage. The scale and timing of this attack were unprecedented and Hamas carried it out on a Jewish holy day, equivalent to attacking Christians on Christmas Day or Muslims during the month of Ramadan. Cowardly. How typically cowardly of Islamic terrorism. So, the violence was initiated by Hamas, knowing that there would be repercussions and that the Israeli government would be forced to act violently. Hamas knew from the start that thousands of Palestinians would die, but Hamas did not care about the death of Palestinians because it is a cult of violence and death, like all Muslim jihadism. Cults of violence and death were also the PLO, the Fedayeen, Hezbollah, the Islamic State, and the brave jihadis of Chechnya, remember, who on 1st September 2004 took over a primary school in Beslan, Russia, on the opening day of classes, and held more than a thousand people hostage, including about 800 seven- and eight-year-old children, yes, seven- and eight-year-old children as hostages for days. In the end, more than 300 of those hostages died, two-thirds of which were innocent school children. That is how twisted the heroes of Islamism are and have always been, such as Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, Laskar Jihad, ISIS, and in this case today, the brave jihadis of Hamas. A strong state of Israel is crucial not only for Israeli Jews, but for the whole world. Israel is undoubtedly the eastern frontier of Western civilization, yes, but it is also the last frontier of Eastern and Middle Eastern civilization. How amazing! Israel does not only protect Jews, it protects Muslims, Christians, Hindus, Buddhists, Baha'is, atheists, and everyone in between. Remember Lebanon? Lebanon was a prosperous and happy country known as the Switzerland of the Middle East only a generation ago. Today, Lebanon is a sad ruin of its former self, yet another failed country in the Middle East, thanks to its fall into the hands of Hezbollah, an Islamist paramilitary organization as violent and bloodthirsty as Hamas. The fall of Israel would be incalculably worse than that of Lebanon. When Islamists take over a nation, they rape it and behead it, just like they do with innocent civilians. Lebanon, Iran, Afghanistan, and Palestine are recent examples. I am not exaggerating. Do you know what the petty-mindedness and intolerance of Islam bring about when it gains power and everyone is forced to leave Islam by the book? Centuries of civilization are trampled and wasted within months, as we saw in Syria and Iraq only recently with ISIS, the Islamic State, because Islam is ruthless in its backwardness. 
A shocking fact I heard from Sam Harris about the abysmal backwardness of the Islamic world is this. Spain publishes more books of universal culture in a single year than the entire Islamic world combined has published in 800 years. Let me repeat that because our brains, yours and mine, cannot quite grasp at once the enormity of such an alarming fact. Spain alone publishes in one single year more books of universal culture than the entire Islamic world combined has published in 800 years. And it is the fault of Islam. This is what Islam does. This is what has kept the Muslim world decidedly looking backwards for so many centuries. Regardless of our political or religious persuasion, Cold, objective facts such as this allow us to compare civilizations on an accurate scale of achievement. Allow me to give you another objective piece of data, just as shocking. As of April 2023, the entire Muslim world had won 11 Nobel Prizes. As of April 2023, the 50 countries where Islam is the prevailing religion had produced 11 Nobel Prizes. Lords. The state of Israel, which the screaming mobs in many cities want to wipe out, had produced all by itself 12. Together, 50 Muslim countries had produced 11 Nobel Prizes. The tiny beleaguered state of Israel has produced 12 all by itself. You explain this difference to me. Who is more interested in science, progress, and education? 50 Muslim countries represent a quarter, 23% of the world's population, and they have produced only 11 winners. This is one quarter of the world's population. They have produced only 11 winners. The state of Israel represents not 0.2% of the world's population and has already produced 12 Nobel laureates. I'm no mathematician, but this implies something like the state of Israel is 115 times smaller than the Muslim world, 150 times smaller than the Muslim world, and is beleaguered by enemies left, right, and center, and yet it is more successful in producing Nobel Prizes than the entire Muslim world. And that is not all. If we add to the tiny, embattled state of Israel, which alone wins more Nobel Prizes than the entire world of Islam combined, the contributions, if we add all the contributions of all the Jewish people around the world, the number of Nobel Prizes soars beyond 200. 200 Nobel Prizes. The Muslim world has 11 Nobel laureates, and Jews have over 200 Nobel Prizes. No matter how you look at this, this is irrefutable evidence of Israel's priceless value and contribution to humankind. Regardless of whatever political, sexual, or religious ideology we each embrace, these are irrefutable facts that should open our eyes to the way Islam has stifled human intellect and creativity wherever it has spread. Look at history. Jews, on the other hand, have contributed immensely to the well-being of humanity in the sciences, literature, the humanities, the arts, and the economy. That is why I am so shocked and saddened by the expressions of anti-Semitism in these shouting mobs in support of Hamas. Because to be anti-Semitic, you must be criminally bigoted and obfuscated. Like Hitler. Like Marx. Like Hamas. Israel must stand firm in the face of the brutality that the spread of Islamism represents, because those who try to take over Israel will then try to take over the rest of the world. Israel is the border they must cross, and they won't stop there. What the raging mobs at all those marches are doing is reducing the conflict we see in Gaza to just a question of momentary differences between Palestine and Israel. This is sadly not the case. The conflict we see burning in Gaza is the perennial conflict between Islam and world civilization. 
That is between Islam and you and me, wherever you are, whoever you are. Islam and you and every one of us who is not quite yet under the grip of Islam. Not just Jews, Christians, Buddhists, New Agers, and Hindus. Also homosexuals, transsexuals, feminists, atheists, agnostics, science, education, technology, art, music, diversity, food, peace, and progress and welfare for all. All this is lost if Islam wins the battle. Israel stands heroically and painfully in the middle of this clash of diametrically opposed ways of understanding life and the world. If you have no idea what it means to open the doors to Islam, listen to a couple of earlier episodes of this podcast. They are entitled, Islam Hates Women. And, is paradise a luxury brothel? Listen to learn what living under Islam implies for women and the hope of winning a hypersexualized paradise which so motivates Hamas soldiers today as we speak. I leave links in the notes. The great battle raging before our eyes has always been unsolvable and inevitable because Islam does not accept the right of Jews to live in Israel or anywhere else. Islam also does not accept the right of Christians or anyone who is not a Muslim to live in their own countries, in Europe, America, or Africa, or the right of Hindus to live in India or of the Japanese to live in Japan. Islam's prejudice is against everything that moves, against everything that is not Islamic. People, economics, art, music, food, fashion, history, science, civilization in general, east and west, north and south. Goodness, even dogs would disappear if Islam takes over because Islam hates dogs. That's another chapter for another day. The conflict in Gaza is but an aspect of a much deadlier conflict, World War III at any moment. This is why I'm hurt and agitated and speaking in a tone that worries me, that I hate, a tone I do not like. I'm sorry, but we are in such peril. Things, sadly, are that deadly and serious. If only those shouting mobs would realize. We must change. In case you didn't know, the most prominent Islamic terrorist organizations have already declared war decades ago on the West and the whole planet. Don't think they approve any more of India, Australia, China, or New Zealand than they approve of Israel. When I mention these Islamic terrorist organizations, I'm talking about Iran, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, the Muslim Brotherhood, and the Wahhabi sect in Saudi Arabia, to mention just the most prominent but there are hundreds of such organizations throughout Islamic-dominated nations. We in the East and West are so in love with our lives and so distracted and ignorant that we do not want to notice that these terrorist organizations have been waging war against all of us for decades. World civilization does not yet recognize that we are, that we live in a state of war that Islamic terrorist attacks occur at any time, at any point. And we must live with so many security measures in planes, trains, airports, and public places such as museums, libraries, and galleries. Islamism has declared war on us all, and we must wake up now. Islam is at war with anything that is not Islam. Either we become more informed or we are handing our future and that of our children into the hands of Islamic barbarism and violence. Whether we like it or not, we are already in a great battle, and there is no turning back, because Islam is a tsunami that will never turn back. Please understand me. We are not witnessing a little conflict between Israel and Palestine in Gaza, but a huge conflict between world civilization and the worst and most violent interpretations of Islam, which, sadly, are the most authentic interpretations of Islam. Responding to this challenge is crucial for the world's present and future stability and security, and it is not just rage against the West. 
Islam, I insist, hates and destroys everything in its path. Buddhist statues in the Maldives and Afghanistan. Classical ruins and temples in Aleppo and Palmyra in Syria. Buddhist, Hindu, Christian temples, Jewish synagogues everywhere. Islam hates Judaism, Christianity, and Hinduism as much as it hates Zen and atheism. Islam hates and destroys everything that is not Islam. And even within Islam, everything that is not the interpretation of the current terrorist in power. It is not that the people in those 50 Muslim nations that have produced only 11 Nobel laureates are any less capable or intelligent than the Jews who have already produced more than 200. It is that Islam has closed the door for them. Islam has closed their minds and creativity and will not let them flourish like they deserve, like they could. It is not the Muslims that are to blame for the failure of the Muslim world. Islam is to blame. And Hamas intends to impose it on all of us by force. I close by returning to my initial claim. Hamas is the worst thing that has ever happened to Palestine. Hamas is identified as a terrorist organization by the European Union, the United Kingdom, Australia, Japan, the United States, and the Organization of American States. That's Latin America. In other words, more than 70 countries in the world, and even Egypt, wow, have isolated Palestine and the Palestinians because of Hamas. This makes international aid to the Palestinians challenging and limited, to say the least, causing huge humanitarian and economic problems for the Palestinians. Hamas controls Palestine with the same violence and brutality that drug cartels control their territories. They are interested in inspiring terror, not in providing essential services, education, and economic opportunities for Palestinians. Hamas was founded with the express goal of exterminating Israel, and the Jews, of course, and can see nothing beyond this obsession. Listen to the courageous testimony of Mossab Hassan Youssef, son of one of the founders of Hamas, in many YouTube videos. I'll leave you links in the notes. Youssef claims that Hamas, his father's baby, is a death cult that aims to establish a global caliphate, and any bloodshed to this end is an act of worship and Islamic piety. Hamas aims to establish a caliphate. This is a lengthy subject to explain here, but it is basically a global Muslim government that has the authority to call every Muslim on the planet to jihad, to holy war, and every Muslim on the earth whether from Argentina, Venezuela, Mexico, Brazil, Africa, China, Australia, France, or Japan, every Muslim on the planet must obey the call to war issued by a caliph. This is precisely what ISIS was trying to accomplish only 10 years ago in Syria and Iraq, and that is exactly the aim of Hamas, what we will face if Hamas wins this war. Hamas punishes and suppresses political dissent, freedom of press and speech, freedom of transit and trade. Like the drug cartels, it does not care about human rights. It uses children as human shields and trains them as human bombs. It carries out human bomb attacks on airports, airplanes, markets, parties, libraries, restaurants and schools. It has launched wars like this one today in 2008, 2012 and 2014 and has perpetrated countless attacks every year with knives, bombs, guns, grenades, mortars, trucks, and drones since its founding in 1987. There are military, medical, and first responder reports that include evidences of rape, beheading, burning, and other forms of torture against children, women, the elderly, and civilians of every race and creed. They shout, Allahu Akbar, Allah is victorious, as they rape and behead innocents and call their families on their mobile phones to tell them proudly, hey, I just killed 10 Jews. And their families rejoice with them on the other end of the line. Do you really want to come out and shout in support of this? 
You think you're a hero. You should be praised and recognized for this libertarian and heroic action of taking to the streets to wave the prefabricated flags and posters that your carriers put in your hand and that you stupidly and irresponsibly brandish as if they were an expression of your personal convictions. But it turns out that you are serving a cause designed to destroy you and your civilization. Islamism. If we don't denounce abusers, we legitimize them. If Hamas ceased to exist, Palestinians would be free and prosperous, and the whole world would be better off. Stop supporting Hamas. <sighs> Thank you for listening. My name is Gabriel Porras, and I am a philosopher and professional journalist. Thank you so much for listening this far. This shows you really care about what's happening in Gaza. As do I, though our political and spiritual leanings may be quite different. Please leave me a comment to tell me what I got right and wrong on this long and sad reflection. If we don't denounce abusers, we legitimize them. With all my heart, I pray for peace in the Middle East and everywhere on planet Earth. And I wish you a wonderful life.